Hi guys, welcome back to episode three of Geography Explained Online. It spells geo. Today, we're gonna to be looking at a very basic geography skill, which is area and grid references. Area and grid references are really important if you wanna find places on a map or in the real world. Sometimes using descriptions can be super subjective and it doesn't really help you to locate a place easily. So we're gonna show you a better way, which is using area and grid reference. Before we do that, let me show you what happens when you try and use descriptions to find something. I've lost my phone. It's just down there, don't worry. You saw it? Yeah, it's down in the middle. Okay, on the, in the middle. On the yeah, other. just in the middle, a bit to the yeah. left. To, to the left? Uh, like here? No, to the left. What, my left or your left? Face north, northeast, and then go left. North, northeast? Yeah. I don't know where you mean. Hey guys, we're back at the whiteboard to show you a quick example. We're going to start off with area reference and we've got up here to help you guys four things that you need to remember when you're doing an area reference. Really important to remember that an area reference is four numbers and it's just showing us the general area that things in. So over here, if we have a look at our little map, the triangle, the plus sign and the circle, they're all in the same general area, the same square. So they all actually have the same area reference. Now, the other two things, we need a, we're gonna use two numbers from the bottom and two numbers from the side, eastings and northings, to identify one of the squares. Obviously, the square's got four corners, stay with me on this. But we always use the one, the same corner to identify an area reference, which is the bottom left-hand corner. What I find is, if you're a righty, there's a way you can remember this. If you're in your test, looking at a paper, and you can't remember which square to use, put your left hand on the page itself, and your index finger and, finger and thumb will actually give you the answer for the left hand corner. We also have Eastings and Northings, right? Eastings are always down the bottom and they are called Eastings because they go up as you go east. Northings, again, up as you go north, that's why they're Northings. Okay, so we're gonna do this example here for the triangle and the first thing we need to do, step number three, is identify the bottom left corner. So for this one here, the bottom left corner is gonna be here, as Sergio showed when he put his hand uh, up onto the square. Perfect. So we've got our bottom left corner. What I like to do now is to actually draw down and across. So I've got my two numbers. And the next thing I need to do is work out which number comes first. And a lot of students get this wrong simply because they put the wrong number in the first spot. They get it in the wrong direction. So we're going to remember eastings before northings. And there's a few ways to remember this. One that we particularly like is that you have to run across the field before you climb up the tree. This one here, we're gonna go across our east ends first. We're gonna run across the field and we get zero two. So the first two numbers that we go down in our area reference is going to be zero two. Then we're gonna come and we're gonna climb the tree until we get to one one. And that's gonna come next. So our area reference for all three of these things is going to be AR zero two one one. Important to remember too guys, we have no spaces, we have no commas, we have no full stops. It's just AR and then the four numbers in a row. Okay, so that was area references. Now we're gonna do grid references. A Little bit more complicated, but they just identify a more specific location. So we've got our three shapes here. As Sammy said, it's the same area references, but they do have different grid references. To get a grid reference, we're gonna actually break up the area reference, the, the whole square, into 10 sections of our eastings and 10 sections of our northings to get more specific. So the first thing we're gonna do, Four, we can have four points here again to remember grid references, and if you remember those four things, you're not ever going to get them wrong. So we're going to, first, we're going to change up the top. We don't have four numbers for grid references, we have six. So grid references are six numbers. Secondly, instead of being the whole square that's identified, a grid reference identifies a specific point. Six numbers, specific point, the other two stay the same. We're still gonna use bottom left hand corner and we're still gonna do eastings before northings, always. So let's use our same square that we have here. We know the area reference is 0211. So let's do the plus. To get our grid reference, what we're going to do is we start using the exact same numbers. We're still using bottom left hand corner, we're still using eastings before northings, which means our first two numbers are going to be 02 once again. Same here as there. Before we then move on to our northings, we're gonna to have to make it a little bit more specific. What we need to do is break up our line here into 10 equal sections. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero would be the next line over. 
Now, we have a way to be more specific here. How, out of 10, how far is it between that line and that line? That's about eight. So, the first three numbers of our grid reference are zero, two, eight, because it's about eight tenths of the way across. We then do the exact same thing with our northings. We break it into 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Obviously, I'm doing this a little bit quick. But then, here is probably about two. So, we use one, one, same as our area reference again, and then we just add two to be more specific. How far across is it? How high up the box is it? Excellent, so now we've got area and grid reference. What we're gonna do now is just show you one other little way that we like to show students do grid reference. A little trick of ours that some students find a little bit easier. All right guys, so we're gonna show you this other way to do grid reference, which is uh, one that we use here at our school. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this little dot here. So we've come down a square to this dot, and we're gonna imagine that we're doing this as a decimal. So we always use our easterns first, and it's between zero two and zero three. And you're gonna draw a line down. So draw this line down, and you'll see that it's halfway between 0, 2 and 0, 3. We want to imagine that there are decimal places between these. So halfway between 0, 2 and 0, 3 would be 0, 2.5. So when we draw it up, we just remember 0, 2, we don't write the dot, so we write 0, 2, 5. We're going to do the same concept over here with our northerns. We're going to draw across, and we're just going to look at it as, all right, here's 10 and here's 11. How far between them is it? And this one here it would be about 10.3. So when we write it up, we'll write 0, 1, ignore the decimal point, and write 3. So we end up with a grid reference of 0, 2, 5, 1, 0, 3. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed episode 3 on area and grid references. Really important skill. You're going to use them again and again. Please uh, join us next week for episode 4, where we're going to be looking at all the different scales that we use on maps. So it's really important when we keep working with topographic maps to understand how to use scale. All right, remember to like and subscribe. See you next week, guys. Bella Magulas. No. Come on. <laughs> One take, one take, one take. Follow my rules. <laughs>